Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Michael Horberg, um, who is um, e Executive Director of Research and Community Benefits of Kaiser Permanente of Mid-Atlantic States. He serves as Director of HIV AIDS for Kaiser Permanente. He also is the past, uh, um, pre he was also previously on the Presidential Council on HIV AIDS nationally in the United States, and is immediately past Chair of uh, HIVMA of the Infectious Disease Society of America. And Dr. Horberg will be discussing the HIV care cascade measured over multiple time points varies by time period and by method. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of my colleagues at Kaiser Permanente, I am very excited to present to you our data and analysis. Uh, we have no, uh, nothing to disclose except that all of us uh, are employees of Kaiser Permanente, and you'll forgive me if I break into vernacular and use the term KP. So as background, as we all know, uh, Gardner et al. And, and further developed by the CDC uh, in 2011, developed the HIV care cascade to explore the performance of HIV care in the United States. At that time, uh, using the, looking at the blue bars, uh, the CDC in 2012 demonstrated only 28% of the U.S. HIV positive population was retained in care, prescribed ART, and actually virally suppressed. However, there is something about the methodology that, that needs to be noted. It assumes that only a success in a later stage of cascade is dependent on success in an earlier stage of cascade. Thus, for example, you could not be prescribed ART unless you had seen your, uh, your provider at least twice in the course of the year and at least 60 days apart. Kaiser Permanente, we have previously have shown that uh, using one year of data, uh, uh, look, showing the, the CDC's methodology, we had actually shown significantly uh, higher rates of viral suppression, even at 61%, in, in our closed system. So this led to two research questions we had. One, can improvement in the care cascade be demonstrated over time in a clinical population? In other words, is, is it just a one-time one analysis? Two, are there meaningful differences in HIV care performance if later stage performance is not dependent on earlier stage performance? And we're going to use the term dependent and independent through the talk. Just to let you all know, Kaiser Permanente is an integrated care system uh, of which uh, we are an insured population, whether it be public or private insurance, covering nine states, California, Colorado, Georgia, Hawaii, Maryland, Ohio, for the time of this analysis, Oregon, Vir Virginia, and Washington, plus the District of Columbia. We have over 9 million members, representing 3% of the U.S. population. And in 2013, we had over 22,000 HIV-positive members. Our system includes comprehensive care, including outpatient and inpatient care, all diagnostic services, and all medical care services, including pharmacy, surgery, and obstetrics. Our care teams for HIV are generally multidisciplinary in all regions, including an HIV specialist, and depending on the local needs, a nurse, clinical pharmacist, social worker benefits coordinator, and mental health. And most importantly, we have shared electronic records used by all our providers, and it includes, uh, at patient level, all pharmacy, laboratory, ra radiology, visit, and diagnostic data, and diagnosis data. So we created HIV care cascades for all our HIV positive members for the years 2010, 2011, and 2012. Note, all members had to be at least 13 years old. And in fact, we have very few uh, ju uh, juvenile HIV positive population. And they had to have at least eight months membership uh, in, in the course of the year, <laughs> year so that we in fact could do no follow up. I would note diagnosis, uh, the measurements for diagnosis although not shown on the slide, implied all patients who've been identified as HIV positive in that year. Linkage to care was a, as at least a visit CD4 count within 90 days of being identified as HIV positive for newly diagnosed or patients newly enrolled in Kaiser Permanente following the DHHS guidelines uh, definition and for established patients having at least one medical visit in the course of that year. Retention in care was defined as at least two medical visits at least 60 days apart, and although the DHHS has since modified that definition at the time of the analysis, that was the definition used. Uh, for antiretroviral therapy, it was filled at least 
Three months of, of DHHS defined combination ART, and viral suppression was defined using, again, the DHHS definition of, a, of less than 200 copies per ml last measured in the course of the year. So we also had two methodologies. First, the dependent methodology, which I described before, is used by Gardner and the CDC. Again, later stage success requires prior stage success. This creates a limitation by which later stage success could only decrease or remain the same. You would never actually get higher numbers. An independent methodology that we, I will show the results of in a few moments shows each state is derived independently of prior stages. So results could increase or decrease at later stages because you're measuring each stage independently. The cascades were created by year but compared also by year. Again, we, uh, we assumed each year independent of the prior year. And differences over time in methodology were, were analyzed. Not all patients, though, it should be noted, we are, a, uh, it's a uh, living uh, clinical system, are in all three years of reporting. However, I would note, 80% of the 2012 cohort was in fact present in 2010, and 87% from 2011. If you look at the results, uh, as you know, our, our number of patients increases over time. We are predominantly male, and we are becoming an aging population. There is variation by region, uh, which reflects uh, the penetrance of Kaiser Permanente as an insurance and healthcare system in the different regions we serve. If first looking at the dependent cascade, you will note improvement over time. Uh, we have actually seen a strong linkage to care, uh, increasing retention in care, increasing uh, ART fulfillment and increasing viral control, and achieving 66% by the end of 2012. Again, I would note that uh, we cannot uh, determine the number of patients who are undiagnosed in our system, so we, we assumed that the total population is those that were diagnosed. If you now compare this to the, uh, to the independent cascade, you actually see definitive increase. For example, uh, the HIV RNA control in 2012 went from 66% to 86%. In fact, the number of patients on ART went from 81% to 87%. Thus, I'm showing clearly that the, uh, the dependent cascade methodology, uh, in fact, underrepresents the actual performance. But if we first look at our analysis over time, we see that first, though, as to meeting our first research objective, the cascade can be compared over time and you can use it to track improvement. In fact, we did see uh, improvements in retention and care, pers ART prescription, and viral control improved annually by either methodology. And in fact, comparing 2010 to 2012 to 2010, we see statistically significant improvement in retention and care, ART prescription and achieving viral control. And although not mentioned in these slides and directly from this data, we have prior shown uh, that we believe our improvement is related to four factors, a multidisciplinary care team for HIV, the electronic health record shared by all care team members, thus uh, when it, no matter when a patient enters our care system, even if it's not an HIV related visit, they will, uh, the healthcare workers can look at these uh, various metrics and see what needs to be done. That's especially true for our clinical pharmacists. Continued quality measurement and quality improvement and high medication adherence rates, although not shown here, for example, in 2012, uh, of the patients on ART, 66% had greater than 90% adherence. But if we do look back at methodology, in fact, we do see some other things. First off, no, there's no difference in results for linkage to care because linkage to care is in fact dependent on diagnosis in our system. But the results do vary by dependent and independent methodology if you look at the later metrics. And in fact, there's up to 20% improvement in, uh, in our reported metrics by the independent method. And then certainly the independent approach has greater results compared with the dependent metrics for ART fills and maximal viral controls. Now we believe that this is because in fact there are a proportion of patients who've been in our system for some time who are, do not see their docs twice a year, but in fact are taking their ART medications and in fact achieve viral control. And certainly uh, that we see this also in our system in other diseases, whether it be diabetes, hypertension, or congestive heart failure. 
So if, uh, we believe the strengths of this study showed the closed care system with comprehensive data capture, longitudinal comparisons, and the ability to compare dependent and independent methodologies. However, we do note a couple limitations, including the number of members with undiagnosed HIV infection is unknown. That would, of course, limit our performance. And a lag time in data. We believe to make this more meaningful, we do need to make our, our lab data more real time. So in conclusion, our care results continue to improve over time. The independent cascade does demonstrate that the use of ART and viral suppression are not fully dependent on earlier stages success. And in fact, we believe the independent methodology likely better reflects true performance in a closed system and perhaps even in a national system. And that the underestimation, underestimation of metrics by the, using the dependent cascades may in fact underestimate programmatic success, and that in fact may give false impressions to patients and leaders of supposedly clinic or system underperformance. I do want to very much acknowledge my, the, the work of my colleagues, the work of the analysts, and of course our uh, HIV providers and patients. Thank you very much. We have time for some questions for Dr. Horberg. Uh, Michael, one, one question. Um, what percentage of people do you think drop in and out of care in a given year with Kaiser Permanente? Because one might think that the people who are losing insurance or changing insurance from a le to a less comprehensive one might have potentially worse outcomes and they would be missing from your database? Um, that's, very val that's a very good question. In general, our uh, churn rate is about 5 to 8 percent. Uh, however, I think uh, it leads to the question of a sub-analysis of patients who've been in our system longer. In fact, do they in fact have better uh, performance? Uh, we can take question microphone four and then three. Yeah, great presentation. Uh, just in the context of your 100% uh, diagnosed, do you have any idea what percentage of your 9 million members have actually had an HIV test over that period? Uh, it's approaching 50%, uh, but now that's a, a diagno uh, an HIV test in our care system. So a lot of patients, as you know, historically would go outside of a care system for re reasons yeah. of stigma, uh, fear, and a fear especially of association back to their employer, which of course we do protect the records. They don't want to give that false impression. However, I think that number is improving, and in fact there are a variety of local efforts in place regionally to improve those testing efforts. Great. Number three. Uh, thanks. Yeah, James McMahon from Melbourne. Just looking at the the, the treatment end of the cascade, I knew you used the DHHS definitions of suppression, but were you able to have a look or, uh, at virologic suppression throughout the year? So if you looked at all viral loads, not just the last one that was done, um, what proportion was suppressed with that? And the other, in a sort of a similar idea, um, the proportion of individuals that were covered by ART for the entire year versus just hitting that definition of fills that you used. Um, the, re the, the second ladder of ever uh, less than one month in the year, uh, less than three months in the year, I've not, we've not looked specifically at that data, but showing from our poster yesterday, if you look at less than 200 ever during the course of the year, you actually increase the performance by about 6%. Thanks. Microphone two. Uh, nice presentation. Um, I assume you use the last viral load uh, in your data set? Yes. Uh, okay. And were any of your patients receiving care from other systems during the observation period? To our knowledge, no. Um, the comprehensive system, if you buy the insurance in general, you go there. The only difference, theoretically, would be, uh, would be uh, if you went to the VA to pick up your meds, if your insurance benefit did not necessarily include ART. But I can guarantee that's a very small number in our system. Okay, thank you. 